Welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be going over what happened during this motorcyclist skid, why there is improper braking procedures, and what we can do to prevent ourselves from ever having to be in that situation by looking for certain clues that happen at intersections and with traffic lights. Right off the bat, I want to say something that they did really well here, which is to be staggered. So the woman up front is going to be the one in the lead. Now, off staggered, the one to the right of her and a little bit behind is the person in black. Then staggering them off again with the person with the GoPro on their face. So what you want to have here is the person with the GoPro be about one second behind the person in the black but off staggered. And then the person with the GoPro, the one that we're watching the video from, should be about two seconds behind the woman in front. So in reality, you're gonna have a two second lead time from the person right in front of you, and then a one second lead time for somebody to be slightly in front of you, but you still have plenty of space. And what happens here is that if the person in black had to do any type of evasive maneuvers from anything on the right, because there's a bunch of construction, you might actually find quite a bit of stuff there. If he had to do an invasive maneuver to the left, he's not gonna be contacting the person with the GoPro or the person in front of him. That is the beauty and that is the safety of riding staggered. So riding staggered is highly recommended when you do a group ride. Now when we move forward, you see brake lights happening here. Okay, we have brake lights, and the reason why there's brake lights is because there's a yellow light. The light has turned yellow on them, and therefore they are starting to be very cautious with the intersection and then wanting to stop. From here, we do not have a good line of sight of anybody doing a left-handed turn in front of us, so this is actually a very good reason to stop because we're so far away from the intersection. Sometimes, though, you cannot stop. Sometimes there's just not enough stopping distance. Sometimes it's actually safer for you to travel through the intersection than it is to stop, just like in this situation here. The reason why I say that is because you do not have anybody turning left in front of you, and you also have that white car acting as a buffer, almost as a protection from anybody wanting to come into you. Remember, line of sight in the last video that we did where we talked about riding at night, we wanna make sure that we can see people and then they can see us. We have a hazard over to the right, which is that red truck. We do not know if he's gonna be going into the intersection to turn right, but we are pretty much protected from the left side because of that white vehicle. That is the vehicle that will be seen and nobody's gonna be running in front of them. We move on a little bit forward. You see how the rear tire is going to slide around. That is called fishtailing. And what happened there was that she locked up that rear tire. Let's go ahead and watch that one more time so you can get a better feel for that. There's the lockup, and then you're gonna have a little bit of a fishtailing. That is gonna be an issue for you as a rider because it's gonna move you around and you're not gonna feel like you have contact with the ground. It's very scary, and it's not something you really wanna go into. If you would like to learn more about emergency braking and other emergency maneuvers, please swing on by ddfmcrew.com. It's a free resource for all parking lot exercises and everything that I feel is relevant to the new rider, even intermediate rider. With that said, let's go ahead and jump back into this and see what we can figure out what happened. Situation. Let's go ahead and go back a little bit. The main thing is you need to search, evaluate, execute. We have from my screen, I don't know if you guys can see it, but right now it is currently a green light. Up until about this point, it starts to turn yellow. You can actually see the brake lights activate on the person in black. Since those brake lights activated, I know for a fact that he saw the yellow light. The woman in front, the person that is going to be sliding, does not see it right away. Up until about right here, this person decided to start applying the brakes. So you need to be able to search for these upcoming hazards, especially at a stagnant green light. A stagnant green light is gonna be a light that has been there for a long time. And you know what? Any moment now it can turn yellow and then it can turn red. So we need to be aware of that. So let's hover our hands over that brakes and even hover our left hand over that clutch just in case we need to pull power from that rear wheel while doing an emergency brake. So seeing the hazard beforehand is very important. So this is why I always talk about always be on the lookout for these things. The person in lane position three saw the brakes or saw the yellow light right there and there's the brake lights. It takes a couple frames, possibly a full second before I see the brake lights apply to the person in front. Remember, you're the leader, you're the one dictating all these things. And if you're not the leader and you're in back, remember to ride your own ride. Just because the person in front is not slowing down, you see a yellow light, it doesn't make you comfortable, make sure you stop in time. 
If this ever happens to you where you're sliding just like that, just remember that it's your rear tire sliding and you still have control over the front. So what you can do is if you start to slide and your rear tire is in line with your front tire, the moment this happens, go ahead and release that rear brake, which is on your right foot, and then reapply it, but do it slowly with more of a progressive brake pressure. This right here, this position is called the fish tailing, you're losing traction, all these different things you learn while riding off road. This right here, if you release that rear brake, there could be a chance that it's gonna swing out from behind you, maybe put you in a weird position, but it's a lot better than continually sliding, 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 and sliding, and then possibly not having the traction for turning to run into that guardrail off to the right. So as you can tell, there's nothing in the intersection. That white car pretty much played a buffer so that nobody would go through. And this is you're already in the intersection while applying the brakes. At this point, release the brakes, accelerate through, get yourself out of that hazard zone, which is the intersection. And then later on, practice your braking procedures and then practice your hazard perception. Remember, look for that stagnant green light. Prepare yourself to apply the front brake, rear brake, and even the clutch. And then to remember to ride in a staggered formation, that is one of those good things that we saw here. The fact that they're in a staggered formation and the person right here off to the right wasn't side by side with her, prevented him from actually colliding with her while she is applying the brakes. This is one of those things that I talk about with staggered formations is very important. If he was right by her and she applied the brakes and fishtailed into him, that could have been avoided by riding staggered, so please ride staggered, everybody. So guys, if you like that stuff, make sure you hit that join button. That really helps out the channel, and I'd love to have you as part of the DDFM crew. Also, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to ride, make sure you swing on by ddfmcrew.com. I have a bunch of parking lot exercises, including emergency braking, to where you can practice in a parking lot in a safer environment, and that way you can be a safer, more confident rider when it comes to situations like this. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around.